Hello and welcome to ME 348 Mathematical Methods 1. My name is Dr. Steffen Krosch and I'm going to be your lecturer for September. I am a mathematical physicist, which means I'm interested in mathematics and physics and I use a lot of differential equations and numerical methods. So the aim of today is to tell you a little bit about the syllabus of this course. So we're going to look at complex numbers, polynomials, then we're going to do differentiation and integration for, uh, for functions of one variable, we're going to do differential equations, and we're also going to do uh, some curve sketching, both by hand and using computer software. So when you look at the syllabus, I expect that most of you have seen quite a lot of it already. On the other hand, I'm hoping that I'm going to tell you at least a few interesting new things and maybe show you some tricks. What is important about this course is that it underlines a lot of what you need when you do other courses here, other math courses here at Kent. So if you can solve your quadratic equations, your differential equations, don't mis make mistakes when you integrate and differentiate and you know how to sketch a curve, this will help you a lot in your course and a lot of mistakes in exams tend to be something simple um, which can be related back to this course. So I'm going to be here to get you, give you a deeper understanding of the material, teach you all these methods and help you practice. So the aim for today is to have a quick look at two topics, so just give you a little bit of a taster and how they're related. So complex numbers, some of you might have met complex numbers before, and we're going to introduce them in detail, but for the moment, I want to solve x squared is equal to minus 1. Well, this looks a bit funny, because if I take a, a positive number and I square it, it's still positive. If I take a negative number and I square it, it will be positive, so there's no solution. But I can invent a solution. And I call this, call this i. And uh, what I want, I want that i squared is equal to minus 1. Good. So now that we have this, we can con go back to our equation. So now we solve z squared is equal to minus 1, where z is equal to x plus i times y. And then we just have that where um, x and y are real. And then the solution are, so now I have two solutions, and these two, two solutions are just going to be plus and minus i. Good. So by doing this, I've come up with, uh, with a solution to this equation, and I have a complex number, and the complex number is going to be x plus iy. So we're going to spend some time in the course to discuss how to multiply these numbers and how to uh, add them up, also how to divide them, and all these things. But for, for today, what is important that we can now solve all quadratic equations. So basically before, so now we have our, take an equation, a z squared plus b z plus c is equal to zero, and here I want a, b, and c to be real. And then we know um, in school we've learned that there are two solutions 
and they are going to be minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And then basically what we have, so, so if b squared is greater than 4ac, we have, then we have two real solution, two real solutions. And then, uh, but if it's the other way around, if b squared is less than 4 ac, we find two complex solutions. So, so that the two complex solution is just going to be x plus minus i times y. Good. And the x will just be minus b over 2a, and the y will just be four, the square root of 4ac minus b squared divided by 2a, because 4ac minus b squared is a, is a positive number, so I can take the square root. Good. So now we have some thing about complex numbers. Now let's have a look at differential equations. So, example, um, let's look at the differential equation. No, I want to have this in black. So, what is the differential equation? We want to find functions y of x such that um, if I take the derivative, well, let's take an example, it's going to be minus y is satisfied. Okay, so now what can we do? Well, from school we have um, the derivative of cos of x is equal to minus sine and the derivative of sine is equal to cos. And if I combine this, then I can quickly calculate the second derivative. So if I take this, the second derivative of cos minus sign, but minus sign is, minus, the root of sign is, is cos again, so this is just minus cos. And similarly, if I take the derivative of sine, then I get um, minus sign. So this type of equation will find out, you find the solution, this is a linear equation, uh, and for linear equation what you can do is you can just add up two solutions and we find that the general solution is um, y of x is equal to a cos x plus b sin x. Okay. So but this is kind of quite ad hoc and we make some guesses. So is there kind of a way of making, making this a little bit more systematic? So one other thing we could notice is that, uh, let's try this. If I take y of x 
to be e to the rx, where r is a constant, then I can take, calculate the derivative. And this gives me r times z to the rx. And I also calculate the second derivative. Well, we, we're going to revise this, but this is the, the application of the chain rule, um, r squared d to the rx. So I have this. Now, if I plug this into my equation, which we had before, so now we have y the second derivative of y, so this is r squared e to the r x, was equal to minus y, which is just e to the r x. And now I want solutions for all x. So this is true, provided we have r squared equals to minus 1. So we know this solution, because we learned this earlier. So we, we don't have a real solution, but we do have an imaginary solution. So, and the imaginary solution, well, is going to be r squared is equal to plus or minus. Oops. The solution is that r is equal to plus or minus i. And then I can write down my general solution. And the general solution would be with some new constants e to the i uh, x and some other constant d e to the minus i x. So what do I have now? So right now I have this, uh, the same differential equation as two solutions. So does d must be related. So how can I relate them? So one way of doing this is impose initial conditions. So Basically, the question is, how does e to the i x look in terms of sine and cos? Oops. Apologies. Good. So what do we do? Well, we know that uh, so if y of x is equal to e to the i x, then y of 0 is equal to 1, because e to the 0 is, is equal to 1. And if I take the derivative, is i times e to the i x, again using the chain rule. And then if I look at, evaluate the derivative at 0, then I get i. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my other solution. So y of x is equal to a times cos x plus b times sine x. And now I impose the same conditions. So if I put 0 in there, I just get a times cos of 0, but cos of 0 is equal to 1. So I get a and b times um, sine of 0, but sine of 0 is equal to 0. So this is equal to a. So this tells me that a is equal to 1. And then just a, just a quick one. So if I take the derivative of this, then I get cos gives minus sine. This one doesn't like me. Okay. X. And then if I take B plus B times cos X. So when I plug this in, so now I want to do the same thing. Um, so what is this? So if I plug this in, um, 
x equals 0 into here, the sine term goes away, but the cos term is equal to 1, so I get b, but I want b to, but I want this derivative be i, so I get b is equal to i. And then what I get out of this, so now if I compare these two things, so then I have that e to the i x is equal to cos x, so I'm just putting the constants in, plus i times sine x, and that's the famous Euler's formula. So I, I hope I gave you a little bit of a flavor of what we're going to do. So we're going to obviously make a lot more details. But here I showed you we had these complex numbers, which allowed us to do all the quadratic equations can be solved. But we didn't really know what this means. And now we, we did this with the differential equations. We had one example where we made some guess. And then we find out that if you make this, this sort of guess e to the rx, then we can solve a lot of, it turns out, all um, second order differential, linear second order differential equations with constant coefficients can be solved in this way using this, this ansatz. So basically, by, by combining this quadratic equation, making them complex, something's been, become a lot easier. So at the moment, I feel a bit lonely because I'm all alone in this lecture theater. I'm very much looking forward to seeing all of you in September, one way or the other, either virtually or uh, in person. Okay, bye for now.